Whoops, you all right? Good evening. Good evening, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Today is June 7th. In 15 days, it'll be summer. That is correct. All seasons are great to tell each other the truth. Positive truths. You know it's the point of this show, even if, of course, everyone is free to open the curtain or choose to leave it closed. The curtain, which is currently being drawn, behind us. Behind us, Pascal. Of course, everyone here is ready, like every Monday, to have you spend a wonderful evening, starting with a very, very, very mysterious Sam. But also with the wonderful Rebecca, who is, as always, waiting in her green room. So here she is, Rebecca. How are you, Rebecca? I'm doing great. So I've heard, Rebecca, that next year you were going to cut your hair. Is that right? Yes, that is true. <laughs> Super short? Well, no, not too short. But, I mean, you'll see. It'll be a surprise. We'll see. All right. So for those here in the audience who want Rebecca to cut her hair, dial 10. Oh. Oh, oh. right. Yeah. A new truth for us here tonight. It's a young woman, Laurent. Stephanie, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome her. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Hello. Have a seat. How are you, Stephanie? I'm good, I'm good. So, commonly, uh, parents-in-law, sisters-in-law and all aren't always friends. It's not always easy. Yeah. But you had a very, very good friend. Yes. Who was... My sister-in-law. Your sister-in-law. Yeah. And I said, had a very good friend. She was my best friend, my confidant. She was everything to me. She was even, well, my son's aunt. I have two twin boys. So, yeah. Marae. Marae. She was the sister of your... Boyfriend. Boyfriend. Yes, the that's twins right. father. The father of my twins. All right. So far, everything's yeah, clear. Yeah, right. <laughs> and by saying was my best friend, we understand that you are not an I would even say that you were on very bad yeah, terms. Yeah, on very You bad don't terms. get along. So how do these two best friends, sisters-in-law, end up angry at each other? We'll tell you in just a moment. When Stephanie meets Mireille, their lives are suddenly filled with the joyous colors of friendship. They are sisters-in-law. A man has brought them together. A brother for one, a partner for the other. Murray and her brother don't always agree. Agreements, disagreements, but in any case, the two women get along great. The more time they spend together, the more they realize what they have in common. They're always there for each other. Having found a confidant, they exchange secrets and tell each other everything. Friendship has replaced shyness. Stephanie soon becomes a mother, and in this new family portrait, Murray quickly takes on the role of the loving and caring aunt. The kids love her. She takes care of them as if they were her own. Their lives have not changed, and their friendship is only filled with laughter. But soon, everything falls out of sorts between Stephanie and Murray's brother. Murray takes a stand and advises her friend to leave him. Stephanie is in a dark place and starts retreating. Out of love, then in love again, and the romance resumes. But this time, Stephanie did not share her feelings with Murray, thereby breaking their vow of always telling each other everything, and Murray feels betrayed. Today, Stephanie suffers from this silence. Murray is more than a sister-in-law. She is an essential piece in Stephanie's life. Will she accept to open the curtain of reconciliation? It's clear that you and your sister-in-law were very close, right? Yes, we were very close. We saw each other every day. Not only in the photos, but also from your reactions. Yes. So, how do you explain the fact that you didn't tell her right well, away I... that you were getting back with her brother? So I didn't want to lose my friendship with Murray, but at the same time, I also didn't want to lose the father of my children, and they were both arguing. So yeah, that's the whole issue. So I you mean... loved her brother? Yes. And you love the sister as a friend. Yes. On the one hand, she's the friend. On the other, exactly. she's the sister-in-law. That's right. And on top of that, they That's didn't it. get along. It's complicated. Very complicated. And so you preferred to not tell her. No, not right away. I wanted to wait to figure out my relationship with Understood. my partner right. first before... To first get through your reunion with Jean Noel. Yes, exactly. And, and, but she didn't understand no. that. Are you still with Jean Noel? I am. But you don't see your sister-in-law? No, sadly. And does he see her? He does not. So the both of you, the couple, are on bad terms with her? Yes, that's exactly right. So you asked us to invite Murray. Yes. And it is Rebecca, of course, our incredible postwoman who went 
to hand her the invitation, your invitation. Check it out. Hi there, today I'm in Roy Monceau, two little towns who have been joined since 1973 in the Lusaire region. When I asked the villagers, they told me that this is a vibrant village where life is good. But there is one person I haven't met yet, and it is Marae. She's 22 years old, and I'm going to hand her this invitation, this way. Let's see what Marae thinks of it. She lives right here. Let's go. Good morning. Hi, I'm Rebecca from the show Only the Truth Matters. Are you Marae? Yes. I would like to give you this invitation. Thank you. And I hope to see you on our show on Monday. All right, okay. <laughs> Is she a hairdresser? <laughs> it must have been the wind. And the image we ended on is unfortunate. So this is very emotional for you, to see her. Very much so. You haven't really seen her in six months, correct? Yes, that's right. Is your husband or your partner the yes, father of the twins? Partner. Mm -hmm. Did he support you in this undertaking? And he also yes. really wants to see his sister again? Oh, yes. He supports me 100%. When I told him that I took the necessary steps in order to make up with his sister, Marae, he supported me, no problem, no questions asked. And if Marae were here tonight, if she accepted our offer since she told Rebecca, yes, I'll be there, let's see if she followed through. What do you plan on telling her exactly? First of all, I would tell her that I miss her, that she needs to let go of the past, and that I know that there's been issues with her family and with me. And it's true that I missed her for a long time. I also wish that my, my children could see their auntie often and that we can pick up where we left off. How because old are your twins? They are 19 months old now. Hmm. And so, real twins? Real twins. How do you explain the fact that she has made no efforts to reach out? Do you think she's very... Upset. Upset, yes. yeah. Yes, because there has been misunderstandings and gossip, and I think that until we can speak face to face, I don't think we can... And being with us here tonight is better than you driving to her place to talk to her? Why make that choice? Well, because I want to prove to her that that our friendship means a lot to me and even to her brother because she's his sister. And, and by doing it this way, I think it can help prove to her that, that she means a lot to me, so. And if, and I'm sure you're prepared for it, the curtain remains drawn considering how stubborn she can be. And I will respect her choice and I will keep hoping that one day it will get better, but I hope that it can happen tonight because it would make things a lot easier for we sure. We hope so too. And first we hope she has accepted your invitation. Yes, We will know in soon. a moment. See you soon. The curtain closes, Pascal. Behind us. The stage is symbolically split in two and we'll reach out to Rebecca. Rebecca, are you with someone? Yes, I have someone here. It's the wonderful Murray. Murray, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. I love all the colors. <laughs> Murray decided to put on a hat to avoid gusts of wind. <laughs> yes, and this way it brightens up the green room. It's nice. Are you eager to know who invited you? Oh, yes, of course. You would almost like me to just tell you. Uh, well, I have a decent guess. Oh? Mm -hmm. Should we call Sam? Uh, oh. yeah. Yeah? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> well, all right then. I'm going to let you go with Sam. Sounds good, thank May you. May I ask you to stand? The truth is at the end of the hallway. Sam will guide All you. All right, thank you. Hello. Hello. It's very nice to thank meet you. Thank you. Hello. How are you? Good. I'm good. Please have a seat. Thank you. Do you think it'll look good on me? Being dressed in pink. No, the hat. In any case, you're looking oh, very elegant. Well, thank I mean, you. I had to. We Are you familiar it. with the show? Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, yeah. Do you watch it sometimes? All the time, yeah. Do you yeah. prefer, Pascal or me? <laughs> uh, do I have to answer? No, I won't. <laughs> I won't. And so do you know that it's uh, always positive news? Yes, of course. Really? Yeah. So you're not too nervous? Not too you nervous. Sure? No, I'm fine. I'm all right. 
Let's say I'm all right. Maybe just a little? Well, actually, I'm pretty sure I know who it is. A man? Oh, yeah? A woman? A woman. Oh, wrong. Don't tell me it's a man. <laughs> <laughs> you came here with someone? Yes. Ooh. With my boyfriend, of all people. Huh. All right, come on. An ex, maybe. No, I'm teasing. Uh, Would you like a clue? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out the screen. Thank you. Murray, do you believe that love can erase bad memories? Ah, you see? What did I tell you? Okay, I see. You weren't thinking in that direction at all, were you? Nope, not at all. <laughs> no, far from it. I get a second one, right? No. Oh, okay. Oh, only one. It's either the I hat love, or the clue. Love, love, right? Not friendship. I love. mean, love can be. It's love. It's love. The word love is open to many interpretations. Yeah, yeah. So, would you like to know who invited you here? Yes, of course. Yes, of, of course. course, yes. Shall we see? Yes, please. Your gaze will cut through the curtain thanks to the magic of television. Let's check Let's it go. out. Yeah. Okay, okay. Annex? Not exactly, but. I get the feeling that it confirms your suspicions. Yes, it does. You're quite perceptive, huh? For sure. Moved? <laughs> it's not a next, but, uh... Almost. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, it's as if. There's been a it's lot not of... It's nothing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot hmm. has happened. She is the wife of your brother. Correct. The mother of the twins whose aunt you are. Uh, I was. You are still there. Yeah, aunt. well, no, no, I'm not. Last I heard, I wasn't. Ah, ah. ah. You have been banished from, 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 from the... Mm -hmm. And I found out very, very, very late. She wasn't even the one who told me, so... I mean, you will be there aunt again, I hope. You are allowed <laughs> to tell us the drama, the desolation, the abandon, the absence, the arguments, but... Yes, of course, but of course. That, that's only until tonight. Do you course. want to hear yeah, what... Yeah, 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 of course. Good. Then the floor is yours. Good evening, Murray. Good evening. If I'm here tonight, if I'm here tonight, it's to tell you that you are very important to me, and so is our friendship, and that I miss you tremendously. I know that a lot has happened, and that I've done things that I shouldn't have done, because you are everything to me. I wrote you letters, I didn't know what else to do, and so I am here tonight because I love you and I miss you and our friendship so much. And my sons, I want them to be close to you and I want them to know that they have a wonderful auntie. So I hope you can forgive me for everything I've done. So yeah. And is my brother aware that you're here? And, and he supported me, he really encouraged me, and I'm speaking from the heart. But listen, a lot has happened, Stephanie. It's complicated. I know. With my family and everything. All I want is for us to talk and to forget the past and to start building a strong bond again, you and I. Because it hurts too much and I, I really suffer from it. Are you moved that she went through all the trouble after uh, the letters and all? Yes. Moved, you like to play uh, hard to get, no? I mean, it, what happened wasn't trivial. It was a bunch of things, a bunch of things that came into play, and so, yeah. Hmm. Do you know if you're going to open the curtain or not? I had made a decision earlier, but now I'm having doubts. Oh, really? What decision had you made earlier? Was it yes or no? Do I have to say it? No. It's up to you. You're free to choose. This is your playground. Well, it was yes. Because I knew it was her from, well, um, from the very first day, actually, when Rebecca gave me the... Um, letter. The letter. You I had an that. inkling that I was maybe... sure of it. Mm. I was sure of it. But, yeah, she has taken the first step, as we say. And it moves me. Of course it does. Yet you're doubting. Is there anything else you'd like to ask Stephanie, your sister-in-law? The thing is, Steph, you know very well that I could talk to you and forgive you, and you know this because, well, you know me, right? But then there's also my brother, and you know that him and I never gotten along. There's always been issues and criticism and all that. So is it really you 
and him tonight who are asking for my forgiveness. You know what I mean, Stephanie? It's not just you. There's also John Noel. I don't want to be friends with you, and then after, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Does he really have your back, or is it he just does. you who came here? Well, no. It's definitely me who made all the arrangements. Mm -hmm. But before yep. making them, I have talked to him, and he said yes, because it really matters to me, Murray, and and... Yes, I know it matters to you, but Stephanie. But he's ready to follow follow me in, in in that direction to patch everything up between us. He is ready to accept you. He he really is ready for it all. Um, we spoke about it for a long time, and, and he supported me all the way until now. All right, now. so, Pascal, what do we do with So, Murray, Murray have you decided? You yes, could? of course. May I ask you the ritual question? Yes, yes, you may. Can I first ask you to stand up? Of course. So we can admire your wonderful pink outfit. Thank you. You really look lovely. We very much appreciate that you dressed up so nicely to come see us. Well, you don't get to be on TV every day. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie came here tonight to ask you for a reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Your sister-in-law, uh, ex-best friend. Yes. So, do you wish to open this curtain, Murray? Yes. Let's open All that right, curtain. let's do it. I missed you too. How are you? You look great. Great. That's crazy. All right. Let's hope that Jean Noel will not betray the trust that Murray granted him by opening this curtain because she <laughs> opened it both to you and to him based on what you said. Yes, absolutely. Be happy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See you around. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Get home safe. Woo! You're out of your mind. Yes! Woo! We will now yeah. meet another person who got in touch with us a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. Laurent, a man? Yes. His name is Egal, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. Good evening, Thank you. Egal. How are you? Have a seat. Hello. Please, have a seat. How are you, Egal? I'm good, yeah. You've come here tonight to speak to a young lady mm -hmm. who's named... Sandra. Sandra. Mm. Who is Sandra, exactly? Sandra, to make it short, she's everything to me. Everything? Everything. She was... She was my girlfriend for a long time, and then after we broke up, she... She meant everything to me. Your best friend, best friend, your confidant, your my confidant, sidekick. My confidant, she was always there when I need her, and vice versa. So, how did one word end such a beautiful friendship, such a strong bond? We are about to find out by watching the summary of your backstory. First, we have a man. His name is Egal. And then a woman. Her name is Sandra. Mix their gazes one day. Add a zest of him, a zest of her. And here is the recipe for eternal love. Loving one day and another day. But where do these first passionate promises go? Past the words, past the pictures maybe. On the photos of yesterday and today, Egal and Sandra are in love, and they think it will be for life. So we pose together to engrave those moments in our memories, and to never forget that in this story, we are always there for each other. And one day, after many I love yous, we realize that love also has its shadows. Agreements, disagreements, the tender words disappear and are replaced by the chilling cold of arguments. Egal and Sandra don't get along anymore. Their romance has lost its reason to exist and their hearts start walking different paths. But they had promised to be soulmates forever, so instead of love, they settle for friendship. Egal and Sandra now enjoy being each other's confidant and best friend. But that game isn't easy either. One day, one mistake, one word. Egal betrays Sandra's trust by telling a secret they had sworn never to reveal. Sandra finds out, and being hurt, she decides not to speak to Egal anymore. Egal is heartbroken and tries to ask for forgiveness, but she refuses to listen. 
Love, friendship, she doesn't believe in it anymore. And from one day to the next, the inseparables become separated because of a word, a secret, a matter of principle. Egal is distraught. He has lost the love of his life. And now, far away from her, Egal experiences the bitter taste of the absence of a lover, of a friend. So today, he is ready to do anything to regain Sandra's trust. Will Sandra accept to forget the scars of the past? How long has it been since you last spoke to her? It's been too long. It's been over six months, I think. No contact. I've tried calling her, but she won't pick up. It goes straight to voicemail. She won't talk to me. But you don't know where me. she lives, where she works. You don't know where she... I do. I've tried to go see her. I've tried everything, but she won't, she won't talk to me. Have you tried to see her face to face after the argument? You said you tried calling her, but since you know where she is, you could have tried confronting her physically to have a conversation, to talk. Well, she has, she has two good reasons to be upset. So I preferred not to rush her, and, and also I knew it wouldn't do any good. And but the secret you told to people, was it that important of a secret? Uh, I spoke too much. Let's just say I spoke too much. Is it really that... Uh painful for you to not have contact with Sandra? Is it really that difficult to live without well, her? Well, I mean, we were together for two years, and it was, we were together 24-7. We were inseparable, and so I... But then you weren't together anymore for a little while. Yeah, after that, we, after that we broke up and we stayed the same, inseparable. Do you, do you think that you might still be in love with her and she might not be? Which could also be the reason why she's taken some distance? Well, no, I think that for her too, I believe it's also hard for her to just forget about those two years. Then how do you explain that tonight, how do you think that tonight, since she is so firm and definitive in her choice and won't even talk to you on the phone, just because you came here tonight, you think she's going to forget that you betrayed her and will trust in you once again? Why? Because I think it's a beautiful proof. I think she'll see that I took major steps, and I think that it could help make her it might reconsider. Move her. It can move her, yes, exactly. So you've asked us to invite her, and Rebecca has taken the invitation to Sandra. Check it out. Today, I am in Vincennes, in the Val de Marne region. The city is most famous for its castle, the Chateau de Vincennes, but also for its racetrack. Anyways, all I'm saying is that a lot has happened here, and more keeps on happening since I'm here to hand this invitation to Sandra, a beautiful 19-year-old woman who, as I've been told, turns a lot of heads, and one in particular. Here we go. I am Rebecca from the TV show Only the Truth Matters. Are you Sandra? Yes, that's me. May I hand you this invitation? And I hope to see you on our show on Monday. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. This is her, correct? Yeah. No mistakes? Just as beautiful. Just as beautiful. Do you beautiful. think she might know it's you? Likely. Yeah? Probably. That it's you? Hmm. So if she's accepted to come, that's already a good sign. If she knows it's you and she's accepted to come... She would at least accept to talk to you. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it could be looking good. What exactly do you plan on telling her tonight, Nicole? I want to tell her how much she means to me. I want her to hear it, and that way if she really is firm in her decision, then I want her to at least know that she's important to me and that I can't live without her. Is she seeing someone at the moment? No. And you? Me neither. Not no. since. So you hope to revive a romantic relationship with her one day? When she can trust me again, maybe. Egal, let's see if she's with Rebecca. If she responded positively to your invitation, we will leave you for just a we'll moment. Be right back. The curtain is being drawn. And we're going to reach out to Rebecca. Did she return from Vincennes with uh, Sandra? Yes, Sandra has accepted our invitation. Thank you very much, Sandra, because you told me you have some serious back issues at the moment. You're feeling yeah. a bit better? I think it's gotten a little better within the last hour or so. Well, it was nice for you to show up, and that means your curiosity was stronger than the pain, right? <laughs> That's true. I'm pretty curious, so and I'd like to know. And do you have a guess, or...? I have a guess, yes, but we'll see. 
I prefer not to say it All right, out loud. so it's probably best to go find out. So I will ask you to please stand. The truth is at the end of the hallway and Sam will guide you. Good evening, Sandra. Good evening. How are you? I'm all right. <laughs> How are you? Thank you Good for evening. accepting our invitation. Please have a seat. Have a seat. And be careful with your back. How are you doing, Sandra? What happened to I'm your good. back, my dear? Well, my pelvis got out of alignment. Oh. Uh, your pelvis got out of alignment? What did you do? No idea. Maybe a wrong movement. I don't know. Well, in the meantime, we hope that our show tonight will help make you feel better. I guess we'll see. Hmm. Do you have a guess? I have a guess, yes. A man or a woman? A man. A man-man? A young man. <laughs> and if that's the case, is that good news or not so good news? Uh, I guess we'll find out later. All right. Would you like a clue in the meantime? Yes, let's do it. Why not? <laughs> Check out the screen. So, Sandra, are you more all hope is lost or there's always hope left? <laughs> it makes you laugh, at least. And that is why we like only the truth matters. All hope is lost or there's always hope left? It depends. We understand. It depends, but I guess I'd say there's always hope left. Do you tend to be left. more optimistic or pessimistic in life? Optimistic. Optimistic. So you're saying there might be a chance? Yeah. Sure you can say that. All right. Don't laugh too much so you don't strain your back, but do you wish to know who invited you here tonight? Yes, I'd like to. Yeah? I mean, that's why I'm here. Let's turn on the screens. Check it out. Hey. <laughs> hey. You're as beautiful as ever. Thank you. Son, you know who it is? <laughs> yes. Mm. You said thank you? Thank you. For inviting you? <laughs> who said thank you? You did? Yeah. Well, you said thank you? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Was You're it welcome. a slip? First, let's see what he has to tell me. Oh, okay. So you want to hear what he has to say? Yes, I'd like to. That's why I'm here. True. Egal? Yeah. The floor is yours. Well, I'm sure you can imagine that if I came all this way here for you, it's because what I promised you, everything I ever told you, I've always been honest. I've always been honest, and I've made a mistake once, and I will never do it again. I know that I have. I know that it was important for you, and... And now, you can be sure, I promise you that I will never slip up ever again. I'd like you to forgive me. Sandra, if I'm here, it's because you're too important to me and I can't live without you. You are the only one who makes me happy. When I'm with you, I'm at peace. And I, I want to go back to what we had. Either a beautiful love story or the best of friends in the world. I want you to sing me songs on the phone again. <laughs> I want us to be together, and I want us to call each other when we're not well, and that we can count on each other like, like we used to do. You mean too much to me, and I can't lose you. Mm. I can't lose you, and I can't be without <clears throat> you. And I can imagine now that you know that. I hope that you'll take it into consideration. That's all. Does it move okay. you? Yes, very much so. You were I mean, together for two years? Uh, yes. And you haven't been together for a while? That's right. How come? Because our feelings have changed, so... Ah. But after that, there has been a friendship. Yes. And that friendship was broken due to mm -hmm. a betrayal. Correct. Rest assured that he didn't tell us anything. He just said that he betrayed your trust. <laughs> he revealed a secret, is that right? Yeah, something like that. Or not? Yes, more or less. And it was worth not forgiving him? And just burning that bridge entirely? When you don't trust someone anymore, yeah. Yeah. Igal has been trying for a while to get back in touch with you, but you've always kept the door shut, the phone uh, turned off, etc., etc. But today you're moved by the steps he took to be here tonight? Well, yeah, because it is stronger proof. 
I think, than to just call me, because calling is easy. Even if I hang up or I don't reply and such, it's easier. It's always easier to call than to to come <laughs> Do you all the regret it sometimes? When you know it's him, do you regret hanging up after you've hung up on him? <sighs> A little bit, but also I have to do it because otherwise it's too easy for him. Ah. It's not funny. <laughs> Good. Sandra, I will ask you to please stand here in the middle and be careful with your back, of course. In front of the curtain, thank you. Sandra, as you've understood, Igal is here tonight to ask you once again for your forgiveness and even more so to revive at least your friendship with him. It's, it's, it's friendship? He said friendship or a beautiful love Igal, story, depending. can we ask again real quick? Yes, I'm here. Igal? Yes? So, thank you, Gabriel. Is it friendship? Or more? Well, I want her forgiveness, and then if one day I win back her trust, then wow. I'll make her the happiest He's woman on earth. He's incredibly patient. He's very He's much very patient. So it's not right very away patient. that you... What? He's very patient. Yes, he's clearly very patient, and you love torturing him. <laughs> and so, you mean you don't plan on picking up right away? First, she needs to open the curtain just to regain her friendship. And then you need to regain her trust for another three years. <laughs> and then maybe you'll go out with her again. But in the meantime, well, you can't I mean, go out with anyone else because that would mean you don't love her. And it would break her trust. That is true. Is that right? Yeah. If he goes out with someone else, it's over. Yeah, it's over. And it doesn't mean that it's not already over, but that would make it worse. <laughs> now let's turn off the screens again so that Sandra can make her decision in peace. So you know that you can keep this curtain closed and simply go home. Make him wait more and more. Or you can open the curtain and finally forgive him. What do you decide? Well, I'll open it. You're opening it? Yeah. You all right? Your back's all right? Thank you. You're insane. <laughs> you. You're so crazy. <laughs> When was the last time you had seen her? Six months. Six months? Yeah. It's funny, but I really picture you two so well. You in a white dress, you in kind of a tan suit, with the <laughs> chairs, and you know, all of it. I can That'd picture be nice. you being married in not too long, just like that. Really? I don't think you're going to make him wait that long. In well, any we case, will let you know. <laughs> we're going to let you mm -hmm. catch up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Goodbye. Women are so complicated. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. We're going to meet a young woman who got in touch with us long to come and reveal something on our show. Please give her a warm welcome. Her name is Alexiane, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Good evening, Good evening Alexiane. You. Have a seat. How are you, Alexiane? Very, very nervous. It's perfectly normal. It's normal. Yes. You are here because you've been on bad terms with someone for... Five years. Five years. That's not nothing. Mm. With someone you're close to, since it is... My father. Your father. And how did you get from everything being fine to being upset for five years and never seeing your father again? Well, it's a family story, so... Uh... <sighs> It's completely stupid when you think about it, and so at the time I was breaking up with my partner, so I was a little depressed. My brother, who was supposed to help me out, instead kept pushing me down in front of everyone, and so, yeah. But you were very close before that. Well, my father, yes. I mean, for me, he's always been someone who holds an important spot. In my life. He holds the spotlight. Yes, exactly. Something like that. That's what For we little all girls, hope. yes. For our daughters. And and so then for the past five years it's it's been too long now. It's an open wound. So it's this amazing bond that you and your father shared that we're gonna try and express with pictures and explain how five years ago it all fell apart. Let's check it out. 
having a girl and seeing her as a ray of sunshine and a ray of happiness in the whirlwind of life. Loving her and telling her again and again, I will do everything for you to be happy. A very loved child, Alexian walks in the protective steps of a nurturing and caring father, a role model of a father, Dennis. The images of the years pass, thereby shaping the life of a little girl. Then Alex Yen grows up. She is a young woman who loves a man, and the eternal circle of family love will bring her to become a mother as well. But loving too early and too young, sometimes we make mistakes. At already and only 20 years old, Alexienne ends up alone. Weakened by those life experiences that steal joy from you, her loved ones are worried about her. People observe her, wonder and doubt whether abandoned like this, she will be able to raise her child. Furious that her family thinks so little of her, out of anger, Alexienne stops talking to them. Time passes and Alexienne learns to love life once again. She builds her present by forgetting the past. But in that chapter of a woman's life, the father figure is missing. Dennis, the beloved father who we wish we could keep around forever. Today, after five years without saying I love you, Alexienne only cares to hear one beating heart, her father's. Will Dennis accept to open his arms to her? Yeah. Have you tried to, uh, patch up the pieces before tonight? Uh, with your father? During those five years, have you thought, when things were starting to look up, uh, it's silly for me to be upset like this with the whole family? Maybe some deserve it, but some don't. Yes, I know, but, I mean, no, it's not the first time that I've been thinking of getting back in touch with him, but I was afraid to because he's someone who... I know that he has a certain pride, and... It's true that he is, I mean, I, I was afraid to do it. I was scared to be rejected. And he's never tried to contact you either. He's never made a move towards you since the clash. No. Why do you think that is? Uh, let's say that we have never been a very tight family, actually. There's been lots of issues. And my father has always said that his door would never be shut, but that he'd never be the one to make the first step. Ah. And your son, Florian? He's yes. never met his grandfather? He saw him in the very beginning, but he was like six, six months old. I see. Or so. And well, now I have, now he's eight years old, I have a four-year-old daughter and... Who has never seen her grandfather? No. Are you currently seeing someone? Yes. Okay. I've turned a new leaf. I also wanted to ask you, what about your mom and all this? Well, my mom is in the east with me. Ah, so you do see her? Yes. They're separated? Yes. And, well, I would say we get along, more or less, but at the end of the day, anything regarding the father-daughter relationship, she doesn't want to hear about it, doesn't care I at see. all. No. How come you have felt the need to do this here tonight, instead of, since your father has always said that his door would remain open, why not go cross that threshold directly? It's easier to have courage when there's people around. <laughs> mm. Is he the type of person who would appreciate being thrown I in don't. front of cameras under the limelight? I have no idea. <laughs> but, well, I think it's generally easier to talk when you have some support behind you. Right? And you know what you're going to tell him? Well, uh, yeah, you always prepare long speeches, but then... <laughs> You'll speak from the heart. Exactly. So right. then we'll hope that the heart, and we have no doubt that your words will move him and that the curtain will open. First of all, let's see if he accepted your invitation. See you in a see bit. See you soon. Thank you. Are you all right? Yeah. Just Pascal, if you don't mind, we are just going yeah. to take a quick break and we'll see you in just a few seconds. So stay put and everything will be revealed in just a moment. Welcome back to Only the Truth Matters. Thank you so much for being here. And as we promised you just before the break, we're going to reach out to our friend... Rebecca, who is in her green room. Rebecca, can you hear us? Absolutely, and I have a guest. His name is Dennis. Thank you for being here. No, thank you. So, Dennis... For inviting you, me, of course. You are very welcome. You come from the region of Vexan? Yes. And you've been hobbling a bit. Well, yeah. About a month ago, I ruptured my Achilles tendon. So, I don't know if you can see it, but he has a very clever system here for his cast. It might allow you to walk in the hallway, I hope. Yes, but not too fast, because... Take of all course. the time you need, yeah. Dennis. I have no doubt that Sam will follow your pace. I will ask you to stand. 
The truth is at the end of the hallway, and Sam will guide you. No rush, take your time, it's all good. It's a pleasure to meet you, Dennis. Pleasure's mine. Welcome, and this is Laurent. Hello, Laurent. Hi, thank you. Please have a seat. And we're having you do a little climb, but be careful not to fall. How are you? I'm so good. So what happened you. to you? And what's that very clever system you got? Well, Look, I he have cut a, up his shoe. I cut and... open my tennis shoes so that I, I could take out the heel. Oh, wow. And that way, it makes it much easier to That's roll. That's very smart. So you never take off the shoe? Oh, no, I that take it That makes sense, I see. Shower. Oh, OK. For and example. are you familiar with the show? Yeah, I mean, I watch it every now and okay. then. Not all the way, because it's, it's late. It's a We're little so sorry. late for me. We'll try to have it air sooner for you. That's very Next nice. Next time. Thank you. Have, you. have you thought, since you've gotten Rebecca's invitation, it could be this person or that person, have you wondered about it? Well, I, I've thought about it, but for now, I mean, we've had some ideas, but it's not really obvious. Who is we? Well, it's mostly right. me and people I've talked to here and there. So you're close circle. Well, we sort of... We have a, a few ideas, but it's not easy. So nothing is certain yet. Right. In order to put you on the right path, we have a clue for you. It's on the screen right there. Dennis, do you prefer being loyal to your pride or to your love? Ah, that's the question that we often ask on this show. What role does vanity play for each individual? Pride, and how much of it can we swallow it sometimes, put it on the back burner at times? So are you a very prideful man who sometimes makes decisions and sticks to them till the end out of pride? Prideful? No, I don't think prideful so. Prideful in a positive sense also. Yeah, as no, in strong, no, but even, proud. even with my pride, I can come back and, uh, I mean, for example, if I said something and it ended on I'm done here, later I think about it and I'm willing to change my mind. You know how to give people a chance. Exactly. And forgive people. It depends what it's for. Of course, there's always... I mean... It always depends. We all have our limits, of course, but... It depends how much you've suffered. Of course. Dennis, at this time, do you wish to go further in the show in order to find out who is behind the curtain? I mean, I've come this far, so... Then I will ask you to look at the screen once again, and you will discover the face of the person who has invited you. I haven't seen her in years. I recognize her. <laughs> yes, it's my daughter. It's definitely painful. What do you mean by definitely painful? Well, I mean... Seeing her here tonight? Or thinking about those five years that you haven't seen her? Five years? I don't know who told you five years. It's a bit modest. It's been longer than that. Longer? Oh, yeah. It's your daughter who told us five years. Then she was wrong with the five years. How long has it been? Uh, it's been seven, maybe eight years. <sighs> Let's just say so much has happened that... <sighs> well, first of all, I had a complicated divorce with her mother. And then there's been a breakup. Because as a child, you sometimes only listen to one side. And then... Later we made up, and then I don't, I don't know why she left. She left, and I don't know. You know, Dennis, the goal here is not necessarily to go deep into the details of people's lives and reasons that are your own, and you will be free to talk to her about it later on if you wish to open the curtain after having listened to what she has to say. Mm. All we look for here is to hopefully put people back in touch when that is what they wish. And so Alexien has come here tonight to talk to you. You know that you can stop here if you so choose and not hear her out. Do you wish to listen to her, Dennis? Yes, of course. Yes. Alexien, the floor is yours. Good evening, Daddy. Hi. Um, I had prepared a long speech, but... Uh, <laughs> Really, all I want to say to you is that there's been a lot of chaos. <laughs> and that's why I decided to run away from everyone, really. But now, 
I just... I miss you. Uh, and... I actually... I started over and... I want you to be able to... be part of my life again. I want you to meet... my children. And... especially Chanel, because you've never met her. You have a little girl, is that right? Yes. And... And then also the third one, because I'm currently pregnant with my third child. <laughs> That's a lot of information yeah. in one night. <laughs> That's a lot. And then, yeah, I know that, yeah, I was probably wrong about the seven or eight years. A lot has been said, um, especially by Stefan and, and, I mean, I... We haven't always all been kind to each other, but I hope, I want, it's been too long and I want us to be able to talk again and to recreate the bond we used to have. <laughs> because I need it. <laughs> Dennis, so, a little boy that you haven't seen in a long time. A little girl, Chanel, that you've never met. And your daughter being pregnant tonight. And uh, it's four months, you said, right, Alexander? Yes, that's right. I'm not <laughs> revealing any secrets by, by saying that. And we didn't talk about it earlier, even though we knew you were pregnant because we wanted you to announce it to him. Um, do you get the feeling that being faced with this information and, and those children expecting you, your detail, I mean, your dispute, they certainly weren't details, but your dispute from seven years ago has sort of now become a detail since, or seems less important now? I mean, yeah, I wouldn't mind, but it depends if that detail won't happen again. You open your heart once, then it closes. Then you open it again and it closes again. What if three's the charm? And what I've experienced, I never want to experience again. What you've experienced, meaning? The trauma I've lived through. The pain, the suffering of having lost my daughter, I can't go through that again. You suffer once, sure, and you, you can do it again, but a second and a third time, it's, it's too much. It's, it's too hard. Alexian, isn't it true that the argument was with your brother? In the yes. beginning, a serious uh, argument, according to you, and of course you're right, and it's not the goal of this show to talk about it tonight, but it seems that it wasn't your father's fault, right? Do you hear no. his worry? That is, it hurt me to not get any news from you. I suffered a great sorrow. I understand. And what shows me that you won't do it again if there's another argument with someone in the family, and that you won't shut the door on me when I haven't done anything wrong. Well, I just want him to know that... What happened was that I needed time back then to get back on my feet. And, like I said, since then I've started over again and... You've grown. Absolutely. And, well, there's also been other issues. And so I've learned to not listen to only one side or the other in order, uh, in order to not have to experience that again and hurt others. Dennis, your daughter <laughs> told us that you hold the spotlight in her life <laughs> and, that, and that she didn't know how to show it to you and express it to you, but she came here tonight to say all this to you on our show. And we hope that later she'll be able to tell you better and in a more intimate way. I'm going to ask you to get up and come stand here in front of the curtain, careful with your leg. I'm sorry. You know, Dennis, that you can choose to leave the curtain closed for tonight and not choose to acquiesce Alexian's request, or you can, of course, open it. What do you decide? <laughs> I told myself that I was going to leave it closed, but my heart can't, so I'll, I'll open the curtain. You're opening? You're opening it. <laughs> Go ahead. You all right?
I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm fairly certain that she heard what she said and she really took it to heart regarding not going back on her decision and not changing her mind once again in the future. I think she also heard your pain. She saw your eyes. I hope and so. And I have no doubt that she'll make sure to fill them with joy and not sadness from now on. I hope so. We'll let you catch up. Thank, Thank you, you, Dennis. Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, Alexia. Thanks. This way? Over here. Okay. Be careful and get home safe. A little bit ago, a young woman contacted us, Lauren, to come and share a truth on our stage. And this young woman is named Deborah. Whoa, 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 whoa. How are you? <laughs> How are you? Hello. Welcome to our stage. She didn't give you a kiss. She kissed me, but not you. <laughs> How's it going, Deborah? I'm good. Would you give me permission to give you a nickname and call you Deborah One? Sure, no problem. I'm sure you know why, Deborah One. And the other one will be regular Deborah? No, we can call her Deborah Two. Deborah Two sounds good. Fine. All right, mm -hmm. agreed, Two. Because the person you've asked us to invite here tonight is also named Deborah. Mm hmm, that's right. And she is, she is your, your best friend. Or rather, she was your best friend. It's still up in the air. I'd say. So you're on bad terms then? Yes, we are. Actually, we're childhood friends. We've known each other forever since we were very little. And we don't talk anymore, so... On very bad terms? On very bad terms. Don't see each other, at don't all. talk, no... No, no. Contact, nothing at all? No, 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 contact at all, and it's terrible, Ron. <laughs> it all happened last summer, everything fell apart last summer, as we're about to find out. Two little girls, one shared joy. Two children that destiny brought together. They grow up together. Their parents were friends, so they become friends as well. Their lives and futures seem bright. They share everything, even their name, and their name is Deborah. Pretty faces, playful eyes, they grow up hand in hand. That tight friendship takes them to the end of the world. They're never far from each other and decide to go to the same school. Between laughter, holidays, and souvenir photos, they live without owing each other anything. Friends, lovers, sorrows, nothing could ever tear them apart. And then other passions emerge. One of them discovers love and meets a boy. She shares her happiness with her best friend. Everything goes well until the friend we believe to be loyal introduces this boy to another girl who he will be unfaithful with. Disenchanted, Deborah decides to leave him. Brown-haired Deborah, the passionate Deborah, doesn't understand why her friend betrayed her. She accuses her of ruining her happiness. Out of anger, she insults her and decides to cut her out of her life. In an instant, she loses both her love and her most beautiful friendship. Months pass in complete indifference. The silence of painful words weighs heavy on Deborah's heart. Today, she has forgiven. Between Deborah and Deborah, friendship went in a wrong direction. Will it find its way home? Hey, seriously. That's not cool. No, it's not cool. No, but seriously, that is not cool. <laughs> it's as if Pascal, for example, introduced to my wife a man. She hasn't told you yet? <laughs> no, but that's seriously not no, cool. No, it's really not cool. And honestly, I understand, and I'm sure that everyone agrees, I understand your anger. But it's more the fact that she didn't tell me after. Mm. Because the trust and friendship we had was stronger than whatever relationship she might have with... This other girl, or... And the guy in question, guy. what happened with him? Um... <laughs> <laughs> <Hey. laughs> yeah. So it's not that the guy was that important yeah, to you. It's no, more, no, 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 no. It's more it's, the betrayal no, of the friendship. No, it's the betrayal of the trust. That's exactly and it. And how did you learn that he cheated on you? By another person in our circle of friends. And, and how did you learn that he cheated on you with the girl that Deborah too introduced him to? Because, actually, the thing is, a lot of other people knew about it before me. That is yeah, really right. frustrating. Yeah, exactly. It makes you that feel really That is often really the case, though, Pascal. So, yeah. <laughs> Some people here are used to that. <laughs> <laughs> and what and did she so... say? What explanation did she have to give you? Well, she didn't really have an explanation. She did apologize a bit. And also, I was a little harsh on her because 
I could have looked the other way and I didn't and I said things to her that deeply got to her and hurt her and... Like what? <laughs> well, you know, when you know someone for 20 years, when you know their life, when you know what you can... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. I'm sorry? <laughs> it's easy to get to someone. To hurt them. To hurt, yes. You know where to aim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when the target is huge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about myself, sweetheart. It wasn't Don't the worry. case for her. <laughs> and so, and she hasn't tried to come back and to, to, to rectify the quote-unquote no. no. huge mistake no, she I made? No, I think what I told her really... I think she felt that it was too much for her, and so... So right now it's her who's upset, actually. Yeah, it's more than her you. who's upset at me. And Deborah too, and you, since around October, November, you haven't talked anymore? But you run into each other at parties or at friends' places, no, or... No, we have a few friends in common, but... Up until now, she has always tried not to run into me. At first, I was the one avoiding her. Usually we know when the other one will be there, and it's true that we... So kind of... you avoid if she's each going other. to a party, you don't go. That's what I did, like the first two months. And you have a boyfriend at the moment? Uh, no. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's okay. It'll come. I know, it's totally okay. So you I don't, don't have a boyfriend? No. All right, so there's no risk that if you see her... <laughs> <laughs> and does uh, she have a boyfriend? I have no idea. I mean, I know that she's had a few... A well, few I'd hope boyfriends. so. I know that much. But yeah, I don't know more about so it. So is she here, Pascal? Is she here? We're going to find out in just a moment. But first, let's see how Rebecca handed her the invitation. Yeah. Because you asked us to invite her here, so we did invite Deborah too. Rebecca took care of it. Let's check it out. If I say atmosphere, atmosphere, you might know the quote. One of the most famous French movies, Hotel de Nord, was filmed here in Paris in District 10. But I'm not here to talk about movies, but TV, and to hand this invitation to Deborah, a 19-year-old who probably knows the quote because she lives right here. Let's go. Good evening. Hi. I'm Rebecca from the TV show Only the Truth Matters. Are you Deborah? Yes, hi. May I please hand you this invitation? And I hope to see you on our show on Monday. Okay, good night. <laughs> to the people who often say, they must be faking it, it's not real. I mean, you could clearly see that she was not expecting our friends to show up. But yeah, people are generally surprised. Has she changed in the last few months? Well, her hair has gotten longer, but um, otherwise I would say that she looks like herself. Ah, mm -hmm. So if she has accepted your invitation, which we hope, what will you tell her? Well, I would tell her that she means a lot to me, that I miss her a lot, and that I feel a huge void in my heart, and that... On yeah. the one hand, you will forgive her. I will also apologize for what I said. Exactly. You will forgive and apologize. Even if she made a mistake. That's right. And if she doesn't open the curtain? If she doesn't, I will go home with my head hanging and I will be very sad and I don't know. So is she with Rebecca at the moment? We will find out in just a moment. A Thank you. We are going to contact Rebecca. We're gonna draw the curtain. The other way around, we draw the curtain, then we contact her. And let's go to Rebecca's green room. Rebecca? Yes, Pascal and, and Laurent. And you come back from District 10 with a student. Mm. That's right. right? <laughs> That's right. That's me. Deborah, thank you for being here. Of course, thank you. <laughs> Since we've last talked, do you have any ideas, any clues, any... I have one guess, but I'm not sure at all. And, well, that's What's it. What's one guess? guess? Well, I... I'd rather not say, because I'm a bit nervous. All right, all right. <laughs> She's a little bit all over the place. Then how about you come talk about it with us on set, if you want, Deborah? Yes, that's but why I'm here. But first, you have to follow Sam. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. That's what she was about to do. May I ask you to stand? The truth is at the end of the okay. hallway, and Sam will guide you. Thank you. Good evening, Deborah. Good evening. How are you? <laughs> Welcome. Good Welcome. evening. Please have a seat. Okay. How are I'm you? I'm doing good. <sighs> a little nervous, but... What do you study? Uh, applied Arts. Graphic design, internal architecture, artwork oh, in general. Yeah, I do. Maybe graphic design, I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, of course you know that someone is on the mm -hmm. other side of this curtain to talk to you. Mm-hmm, yeah. This person took a big risk by coming here tonight. Yeah. Would you like a clue? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Check out the screen, Deborah. 
Deborah, do you agree that love is like a work of art and it takes time to rebuild a masterpiece? Oh, that's nicely phrased. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I don't really see how it connects to our story, but it was a great clue, right? <laughs> Meaning it confuses people even more. So it's not supposed to help me. It's a clue that doesn't help. Got it. No, it's a clue that that allows us to get to know you better. Gotta I see. Gotta think positive. <laughs> so do you think that love is like a work of art and that it takes time to rebuild a masterpiece? Is that right? Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, sure, I guess. I don't know. All right. Deborah, do you want, since this clue turned out to be so incredibly yeah. useful, do you want to know who is on the other side of the curtain? Yeah, that's what I'm here for, so yeah. <laughs> and look up at the screens, and you will discover the identity of the person who invited you here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hey. Hi there. Mm. It's been a while. <laughs> you know who it is? Yeah, yeah. You know her name? It's the same as mine, so. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to remember that way. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Deborah wow. two. Do you want to know what Deborah one? Oh yeah, sure. And turning it around, Deborah one. Do you want to know <laughs> what Deborah two has to say tonight? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so you told us earlier that you had a guess as to who it could be. Did you guess it was her? Yeah, but I mean, I, yeah, I did. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Deborah too. ex Deborah. We win and yes. lose our spots here. Yes. The floor is yours. So hi, Deborah. Uh, I'm sure you know the reason why I'm here. You yeah. know that we haven't seen each other in a while. Hmm. That we started arguing for something that's maybe a bit stupid. Mm -hmm. And even if it's true, it really hurt me and that I still don't understand why, why you did what you did. But it's true that, at the same time, I can't help but think that we can't, we can't just stop seeing each other because of something like that. And I have really missed you during all those months. Me, Mathilde, Virginie, we all miss you. And you really were a part of it, and you know it. You were the part of it. <laughs> and I want to say that I would really like it if we could start hanging out again a lot even yeah and I want to apologize for everything I said to you it's things you mm -hmm. know that I didn't mean mm -hmm. at all it was just intended to hurt <laughs> and yeah and I love you and you know it <laughs> Deborah, Deborah, when you have when she told you that what you did wasn't right you reacted to it yeah, because I wasn't really in the... Well, I can imagine she told you this story. A little bit. In her own way. Or rather, from her point of view. And I was in a difficult position between two friends. Between Anne, Laura, and Deborah, and I really didn't know what I was supposed to do. I also didn't want to get caught up in the middle of their arguments, because it was really none of my business. And I tried to stay out of it, so that's what happened. And she was upset about it, which I can understand. But she accused me of a lot of things. She said things to hurt me, and I guess she, she succeeded. She didn't tell us what yeah. she said, but she said yeah. she told you very hurtful things that she didn't mean. Mm -hmm. Would you not have taken the first step? Well, I've asked myself that question, but I mean, no, I'm happy that she's the one who comes back and who also accepts her mistakes because... Mm. Have you missed her? <laughs> Yes, a lot. Do you accept your mistakes, Deborah, too? Me? Yeah. Uh, my little mistakes, yeah. Well, we both made mistakes. Exactly, yeah, we both exactly. Made mistakes. Mm. Deborah, I will ask you to please come stand here in the middle, in front of the curtain, mm. a curtain that I will ask you to either open or to leave closed. The choice is yours if you want to make up mm. with Deborah, who came here tonight to try and put an end to this argument, what do you decide? Well, I'm gonna open the curtain. You want to <laughs> open course. it? Of course. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so You're glad. Happy. So and we'll now, do. you don't introduce anyone to anyone ever again, and all will yeah, be well. Never I mean, again. what a silly idea to right? introduce people to yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
All right, bye, girls. Thank you. And stay Thank friends. You. Bye. Bye, Deborah. <laughs> Rebecca! Can we talk to Rebecca Pascal? Absolutely. Who is in the green room with you, Rebecca? I'm here with Virginia. Virginia, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for accepting the invite. Well, yeah, by curiosity. Ah, uh, so you are very curious? Yes. And you are 21? Yes. You come from Strasbourg? Yeah. You love cinema? Yes, I love cinema, yeah. <laughs> well, we hope that you'll experience a beautiful story uh, tonight. I hope so, thanks too. Thanks <laughs> to us, and thanks to the person who has invited you, and whose identity we are going to discover once we turn off the connection with the green room. His name is, and we're going to welcome him right away, Miguel. How's it going? Good evening. Good evening. Good How's evening. it going? Have a seat. How are you, Miguel? How's it I'm going? Good. I'm good, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Miguel, there is someone who is close to you. Yes. Who is... Yes, my friend. Oh, sorry, my sister. sister. Yes, my sister, who I love. Sisters are very important. Well, yeah. It's good when you're a boy, like for me, who has sisters. It's good to have sisters, because sisters have... Girlfriends. Girlfriends. Right. <laughs> Older sister, younger sister? Younger sister. But younger no girlfriend me. yet? No. Not, not yet? yet? But here's the thing. The young lady we saw in the green room with Rebecca is one of your sister's best friends. Yeah. And, That's right. And you know and her, she's your sister's friend, but secretly... There is something going on. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But she doesn't know. Well, no, she doesn't know. She's not aware of it yet, so... Do you often see Virginia? Yeah, I see her almost every day. She drives my sister home from school. So I see her pretty much every day. She comes over, grabs mm. a coffee, and leaves. Alone, or she comes to see your sister? No, to see my sister. Yeah, I'm not that lucky. She never comes to see you? Well, yes, I mean, I'm also at home, But she's home, not there so... for you, she's there for your sister. Yes, that's right. And you take the opportunity to see her. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Has this been going on for a while? Well, yeah, it's been a while, yeah. It's like been... what, three months, six months, three years? It's been six months at least, I think. Six months, so what? She comes over for coffee every yeah. day. She's doing it on purpose now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you tell yourself secretly that she's coming over for coffee, which is certainly good, I'm sure. Miguel makes great coffee. You... You stay in your corner. I put my feet up on the table. What do you do when she arrives? I join them and I put my feet up. Okay. And she comes <laughs> over every day to drink coffee? No, every evening. Every evening? Yeah. To hang with your sister? Right. And then what do you do? Well, I listen, listen, listen. I visualize. I drink my coffee. But have you also established a friendship with her, even though you haven't revealed your feelings to her yet? Uh, friendship, yes. We've yeah. been hanging out, going dancing, having drinks. And, and that's it? Sadly, and always with yes. your sister present? Well, a couple times we went out just uh, us. Yes. And so? There's some hope. And, well, nothing. And nothing? Why? I mean, I'm too scared. <laughs> I can't do it. When I see her, I get intimidated. But a coffee? A coffee is fine, no problem. Not as scary. <laughs> right. But have you tried to at least talk to her? To put your hand on hers? Or touch her shoulder? Put your hand on... On, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> on. <laughs> no, but I mean, like we do when we're in love with a girl and that we want to show calm her. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't tried to, no. Not that I didn't want to, but I never tried. And how do you think she feels? Honestly, I have no idea. I hope no that... idea, no certainty. No. Not even, not even an inkling? No, not what really. What he knows is that, is that she likes, she likes uh, espresso with sugar. Exactly. Right? <laughs> See? Exactly. I knew it. That's right. <laughs> and what about your sister? Does she know? Well, my sister, yes, she does know. And she, she... supports you in this? Yes. And does and she... And she's never tried to talk to her friend about it? Well, no, as long as I don't tell her to do it, she won't. At least I don't think. And does she seem to think you've got a chance or no, your she sister? She has no idea since she's never talked to her about so it. So she's sending you to the trenches and exactly. we'll see. Thanks, sister. <laughs> but would you be happy to just have an answer, positive or negative? I'd of course, positive be would positive. be better. That's what we hope for as well, of but course. there's a risk that the curtain might remain closed. You ready yeah, for that? But you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Exactly. That's, That's right. a good way to look at it. And we're going to let you take your shot in just a moment, and we hope you will succeed. Thank you. And we will be right to you, Miguel. I find him very brave, Pascal. Right? I agree. Very brave. Rebecca? The curtain has been drawn. Rebecca, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. We were laughing because she just told me that by watching the show. She's told herself that she would never, ever end up on a show like this. Why did you think that? 
I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know who... Uh, you don't know no. who could have something to tell you. Have you thought about it? I have a it? little bit, yeah. It's not unusual for people who watch it at home to think, oh, I would never do that. <laughs> that is true. She thought no one had anything to tell her, but someone <laughs> does. So I will ask you to get up. The truth is at the end of the hallway, and Sam will guide you. Good evening, Virginia. Good evening. How are you? I'm good. Have a seat. Please have a seat. Did you imagine we'd be this handsome? Uh, yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? You feeling relaxed? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. You'll feel better in just a moment. I hope so. You know that someone is here to talk to you? Yes. Did your family come with you or no? I have a friend. Okay. Which is nice. Good. So, would you like a clue to try and help you? Guess who could be <laughs> hiding behind the curtain? Yeah. yeah? I want one too. Look up at the screens, Virginia. Virginia, for you, is happiness a matter of will or a matter of luck? Is it a... Not at is all. Is it a, a matter of luck? Happiness, according to you? Or a matter Do of will? Do we sometimes have to grab an opportunity when it is offered to us? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. An opportunity? Of course. So, like, an opportunity comes up and it might take you on a long journey? Why not? Mm. And it depends. Do you often take initiatives? Do you take things into your own hands, um, or do you wait for them to I come to you? I wait for them to come to me. You wait for them to come yeah. to you. You have a boyfriend mm -hmm. at the moment. No. <laughs> Virginia, do you want to discover the identity of the person yes. who invited you? Yes. You, sure. Yes. Well, then let's do it. Look up at the screens. I can't believe it. One sugar or two? <laughs> Do you know this guy? Yes. Who is he? It's Michael. Michael or Miguel? Well, yeah, Miguel, Michael. Your name is Michael. <laughs> How <Yeah>. disappointing. <laughs> Uh, do you wish to know what Michael, Miguel... Yeah. Yeah? All right. Yeah. You know the show. Mm -hmm. You know you can stop mm -hmm. at any moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. No one is being forced to do anything here. Yeah. So you want to hear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's hear what Miguel has to say. Miguel, Michael, you have the floor. Hey, Pumpkin. Oh. <laughs> you call her Pumpkin. I do. <gasps> yeah. Little nickname. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. Good? Nervous, but I'm good. No, don't be. I know. <laughs> Well, I made you come here today because I have a little secret to tell you. Oh, yeah? But you can't tell anyone. <laughs> a little late for that. <laughs> Much She won't late. repeat it. We've known each other for about, what, two years? More or less, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for a while now, uh, my feelings for you as a friend... Yeah? ...have changed. And it's not really... ...quote-unquote... Friendship. Mm -hmm. It's a little more than that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've invited you here tonight because, like I've told you when we've been out to the club or to have some drinks, mm -hmm. I mean, I would have had the opportunity to tell you a few times, mm -hmm. but I've never had the courage. I've always been intimidated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even in front of a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> And so, I've come here to tell you that I have feelings for you. <laughs> I'm sure you knew it as mm -hmm. soon as you saw me. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I wanted to tell you in front of millions of viewers that I want to build a future with you. Ah, uh, it's <laughs> tough. I wasn't expecting it. Not at all. No? No, why? Why didn't you tell me face to face? I couldn't do it. I was too intimidated. And here it's easier? Like this on TV? <laughs> right? It's totally worse. <laughs> I know it's weird, but it's often like that. It's sometimes easier. Or that's at least what a lot of people who come here tell us. It's sometimes easier to do it in front of a lot of people with extra pressure. 
than face to face with a cup of coffee. It's a paradox. Or at the movies. <laughs> Do you have anything else to tell her? No, not specifically other than I love her. Oh, wow. That's not insignificant. No, that is true. Uh, so you are friends with his sister? Yes. Okay, and you go over there in the evenings for coffee? Often. <laughs> Often, to go see his sister. Yeah. Because she's your friend. That's right. And had you noticed that Miguel... No, I didn't think so, no. I thought we were just friends. I didn't expect it. Mm. I didn't expect it. What's funny is that <laughs> as you're speaking right now, in this very moment, I have really observed your eyes. You're like five feet away from me. Mm -hmm. And I have no yeah. idea what your answer will be. <laughs> very honestly. I don't know either. Me neither. <laughs> would you like some time to think about it? We wouldn't mind taking a very short break and meet up again in just a few minutes. Does that sound good? Yeah. We'll be right back. Thank you for being here with us on Only the Truth Matters. And we are still here, Pascal, with our friend. Yeah. Who was going to have to make a decision. All right. Well, you know how it goes. Could you please stand in the middle here in front of the curtain? Virginia. There is a fellow coffee lover on the other side of this curtain who can't wait to hear your answer. Yeah. He is in love yes. with you. On top of this beautiful friendship that you've been sharing for some time now, he has come here to express his love to you. You know you can choose to leave the curtain closed and just go home, and I'm sure it won't stop you guys from seeing each other and drinking coffee together. Uh -huh. You can also open it like he is hoping. What do you decide? Oh, I think I'm gonna open it. Aww. Yay! You can go meet Go ahead. Did this to kill me. She keeps us on the edge of her seat, hiding her feelings. She does. <laughs> Miguel, that was very well played. Oh, really? Thanks. No, seriously. I don't know about you guys, but I really thought it was going to be a no. Well, that makes two of us. Seriously? Yeah, well, listen. Real. Now the future is yours, and we're your journey might take you and what you might build together. Thank you, Virginia, for accepting to listen to what Miguel had to tell you tonight. And don't drink too much coffee, <laughs> huh? We'll do our best. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, Virginia. <laughs> Pascal, do you wish to know who is here to tell us a new story? Of course I wish to know who this young woman is who contacted us a few weeks ago. And her name is, ladies and gentlemen, Emmeline. Good evening. Good evening, Emmeline. Please have a seat. How are you, Emmeline? I'm good, I'm good. It's an important day for you. Yes because you are here to talk to someone who matters enormously in your life, who mm -hmm. has mattered a lot in your life. Uh, I was going to say it's your father. Yes, it's as if- Am I correct when I say he's your father? Yes. I'm just a little incorrect. A little. Technically, he's the man who has replaced my father for 10 years. Right. And who, in my heart, is in fact my real father. His name is Ahmed? Yeah, yes. And it's him and his wife, who have been exactly. a very precious foster family, Yes. And we can say that the way they have cared for you and taken you in mm -hmm. has completely changed your life. Let's see it in the pictures. This is the story of a little girl, Emmeline, who from a very young age experienced the hardships of living without her parents. Born into a big family, she loses her father at age one. She is then given to a nanny. The days go by without a family for this little girl. But soon, a new smile enters her life. Arms open up to embrace her. Emmeline is four years old. She discovers life, love, and childhood thanks to these people we call mommy and daddy. She is raised by a kind man, Ahmed, a very nurturing dad who whispers lullabies to an ear who came from afar. A spoiled child, a loved child, Emmeline lives in the happiest of homes. Gifts, cuddles, and love are abundant. Emmeline starts collecting photos where happiness is visible on this little girl's face. 
Then the teenage years start. Conflicts begin. It's the age of misunderstandings. Emmeline sees her biological mother more and more often. Ahmed and his wife are afraid to lose the one they love like their own daughter. But Emmeline is a tough child. She does as she pleases. They argue on a daily basis. Harsh words now replace all the I love you's from the past. Ahmed doesn't understand his daughter anymore, but he doesn't judge her. And then one day, because she wants to live a new life, without telling Ahmed, Emmeline runs away. No goodbyes, a daughter leaving an open wound in her father's heart. Emmeline first lives in a home, and then she finds love. Young but ready to be a mother, Emmeline gives birth to two little boys. Life follows its course with the man she loves and her two children. They seem happy and fulfilled, but she misses her father, who she loves and who she has hurt. She regrets her behavior and realizes today that she needs him. Emmeline wants to say I'm sorry and thank you to Ahmed for all the love he has given her. Tonight, she wants to ask him if he can walk her down the aisle on her big day. Will Ahmed accept? So we've understood that, like it was said, that there was a time when you were very close to them since you were a little mm. girl, very yes. little. They're like your own parents. And then suddenly, it, it changed a bit. Mm -hmm. What made it change in that way, you think, according to you, now looking back? I think... It's the tensions that started growing between us, and my attitude towards them was very unreasonable, and I didn't want to listen to them. I just wanted to live my life and do my own thing, so yeah. You've been tough on them? I think so, yeah. Do you feel like you've been able to tell them at the time, or at least before, how much you love them and how important they are to you? No, I don't think I ever really told them. Not outwardly, no. I'm sure that they know, and they knew it back then, but it's true that today I want to be able to say it and say it in front of everyone because so on their side, they've heard a lot of gossip as to why I left, but it's true that it's partially my fault, and today I want everyone to hear it and prove to them that, that they really did their job well because, yes, it was a job, but they did everything right. And it was hard sometimes, but their role as parents, they did it wonderfully. And they have four children. They're real kids. And you got along with those children? They're kids. They have four kids, yes. But otherwise, they also raise a lot of children at their house. It's really the house of happiness. The house of happiness. Yeah. And the house where you feel yeah, welcome. For so sure. for the last two years, it's been rough. And you said that now you've evolved because you yourself have children of your yes. own. Yes. What did that change? Imagine or think about when you had children. What did it do? Well, I want them to be able to consider my children as their grandchildren and my children as their grandparents. And that's it. That's really it. So you've asked us to invite Ahmed. And so Rebecca went yes. to hand him his little envelope like every time. Check it out. All right. Today, I'm in the region of Loise, an hour away from Paris in Beauvais. But of course, I couldn't come here without stopping at the St. Pierre Cathedral, the nave of which was so ambitiously high that the construction was never finished. I could also show you the clock that indicates the time of the Last Judgment, but I don't have the time. I'm here to hand this invitation to Ahmed. Let's go. Hello, I am Rebecca from the show Only the Truth Matters. Are you Ahmed? Yes. May I please give you this invitation? And I hope to see you on our show on Monday. Is that him? Yes. We didn't find the wrong dad? No. Is this making you emotional? Mm-hmm. Yeah? And there is something you haven't told us, but that we mm -hmm. already know, is that you are getting married in a few weeks. Yes. And you are here tonight to... to I was going to say to reclaim your father's heart, but at least tell him I was wrong. I made mistakes, and I'm here to tell mm -hmm. you that. It is closely related to the fact that you're getting married, because there is something you would like to ask him, no? Well, I really hope that he will accept to take the role of the father when his daughter gets married, that he walk me down the aisle and support me, and that he approves, and that he can be happy for me, and yeah. Like a real father. Yes. And you're going to ask him that tonight? Yes. So, has he responded favorably to the invitation? We will find I out in just so. a moment. And we hope the curtain will open up, of course. 
All right. Is Rebecca with someone in her green room? We will find out right away, Pascal. The curtain is drawn. The camera is back on. <laughs> Rebecca, who always keeps a poker face. <laughs> Oh, I keep it incredibly well. And as you can all see, Ahmed has accepted our invitation. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Ahmed, you have some guesses, I would imagine. Yes. Yes? Somewhat. Can you tell us, or...? Yes, a friend from two years ago. Do I need to say why? No, you're thinking it's a friend. So it might be him, or if it were someone else you would like to know, or...? Why would it be someone else? I told you I know who it is. <laughs> well, then I think it's best if Ahmed meets you on stage. To find out, I will ask you to stand. Okay. The truth is at the end of the hallway, and Sam will guide you. Okay. Good, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, Ahmed. I'm doing Have well. A seat. Have a seat. Sure. So you're good? Yeah. So, Ahmed, you know that someone wants to talk to you tonight, someone who's on the other side of this curtain. Would you like a clue to try and confirm your guess, potentially, or affirm it? Yes, for sure. Right. To confirm what I said. Yeah, yeah. So Let's you think it's it. a friend? Yeah, yeah, two years ago. Someone yeah. you got into an argument with two years ago? Oh, no, on the contrary. On the contrary. Someone you've helped out who's here to thank you. Helped out tremendously. A huge sum of money. And he promised me two gifts. In <laughs> fact, he even told me again recently. What did he tell you? Two well, gifts. Well, he told me one would be material. <laughs> and the other one, he said, you're going to laugh. Oh, really? You're oh. going to laugh. Yeah. So we're the gift. <laughs> That's not a great gift. <laughs> <laughs> also, apart from that, I have two friends who are huge fans of oh, really? yours. Can I say their names? Pascal of and also Yannick. Yannick and Pascal. Pascal, Yannick, hello to you. Yeah, yeah. Ahmed, do you still wish to hear the clue? Yeah? Yeah. Then look up at the screens. Do you believe that life is like a book, that you can turn a page or read it a second time? Ah. I didn't understand the clue either. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that life is like a book uh, where you can reread your life and go back in time, according <laughs> to you? Or is it very linear and that we shouldn't look back too much? It depends what it's about. Um, Do you generally like thinking about the past, seeing people again, friends? Like a friend from two years ago, for example, who owes you a lot of money. Yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> well, he promised it to me before the end of the year. Before the end of the year? Yeah, yeah. That friend better not miss it <laughs> no, then. No, but I'm sure it's him. In case it's not you who's waiting behind the curtain, who knows? I'm <laughs> sure it's him. You're it's sure? exactly the type of thing he'd do. All right, then let's yeah, find him. out. <laughs> Are you ready to find out? Can I be honest? Yes. I'm almost half a century old, seriously, and there's only one face I don't want to see. In half a century, that's not bad. There's only one face you don't want to see. The whole world. One. Man or a woman. Well, that's personal. Ah, I can't okay. tell you that. Well, yeah, but I mean, we have sloppy clues. But if I clues. see the face, I'm allowed but to... But you should be able to tell as if it's at least a man or a woman. I can always get up and leave. I'm allowed to, right? Absolutely. I can just get up and get the f That's what my friend Yannick told me, at least. Who explained it to you? Well, Yannick told him, the one who's my fan. He even has all the collector's editions of Yama Photo. Was that the title of the photo, show? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's photo. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I knew it was Yannick. And Pascal, yeah. well, Pascal is your fan, of course. He yeah, has all the cassette both. tapes of all the shows. All of it. He records oh, yeah. everything? <laughs> Ahmed suddenly doesn't trust us anymore. So just yes. one face you don't want to see woman. in a half century? I mean in half That's a century not bad. of life. That's not too bad. Right? But Ahmed, to put you at ease, according to the principles of this show, like Yannick explained to you, who's everything. a big fan of mine. All uh, the stories. You are so full of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> if it is, in fact, that face on the other side of the curtain, yeah. you can just simply get up and leave, all right? <laughs> okay. If we agree on that, should we open? Are you ready? Um, yeah. Shall we? All right, mm -hmm. then let's do it. Mm. She has given me my first gray hair. 
Your first gray hair, that was her? My first gray hair, yes. You don't have that many. Well, I said the first. Well, then she didn't give you that many. <laughs> yeah, it's a... It's a young woman who wished to discover the world very young. The adult world. With its consequences, I think. So, Ahmed, we hope it wasn't the person you were mentioning no, earlier. No, 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 not at all. No, it's a very long story with the other person. Do you wish to hear what she came here to tell you tonight? Of course. Hmm. Emmeline, the floor is yours. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. And I hope you're okay. Yeah, I'm all right. Well, I asked you to come here tonight so that we could talk about the past. So, for ten years you have replaced my father. And you did it wonderfully. You still do so in my heart today. And so, I left. You know, why I did it. And the day I left, you weren't there. And I don't know if you saw it coming or not. And today, now that I'm older, I really regret it. And I want to say I'm sorry. I love you so much. You, auntie, and everyone. And that it changed absolutely nothing in my heart. And I am getting married in July. And I would like for you to be there like you have been for Elodie and that you stand there as my father. <laughs> and so, yeah. I'm glad she's getting married. <laughs> now I'm happy. Marriage is a good thing for you. Yeah, I mean, very traditional. she did it backwards, but oh well. What? <laughs> <laughs> she did it backwards. She didn't do things in the right order, in your point of view, but what matters is to do it. Yes. But to live your life. I'm glad she's getting married. I'm genuinely happy. But, yeah, like I told you, she was 15, and 15, you want to know the world. It's happened to all of us, yes. right? But I'm very, very happy. Good. So she's getting married in July. I am very glad. You know her fiancé? Yes. You like him? Yes, it takes me 30 seconds to analyze someone. Oh, yeah. wow. And? And so, Raphael is a good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry, Ahmed, you won't get reimbursed tonight. Matt, I will be eventually. <laughs> well, we do <laughs> hope, hope you so. will be, that's for sure. All right. In the meantime, I think this love letter from Emmeline seems more important. I will ask you to come stand here in the middle, please, on the cross, in front of the curtain. Mm -hmm. Emmeline has come to ask for your forgiveness and also to be her father once again for the long run this time by being the one to walk her down the aisle on the day of her wedding. Do you accept and choose to open the curtain? I'm going to open it, but I'm going to open it, of course. But by opening it, and that is just me, um, the moment I open it, her sorrows will become my sorrows, her joys my joys, and I need to be strong. Yeah. Once again. <laughs> but yeah, that's all. <laughs> I'm sure she heard you. So we open. But yes, anyways, we open the curtain. Yes, of course. Thank you, Ahmed. Let's sure. open the curtain. let you catch up. Thank you. You have said wonderful things here tonight, Ahmed. Oh, really? Thank you. Oh, really? I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to let you guys Thank go. Thank you. It's that way. Have a wonderful wedding, Emmeline. Thank you. And we're going to speak to Rebecca, right, Pascal? Rebecca? Yes, looking forward to and it. Who are you with right now? So late in the evening. Well, since it is so late, I am on my own. No, there's a chair. Yes, I quite like it. Well, then we're going to leave you two alone, then. <laughs> oh, no, please Until let me out. Until the next show. We will see you again in a week, Rebecca. It'll be our pleasure. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you for having watched our show. And if you also wish to declare your love to someone, or want to make up with someone, or apologize to someone, then this is your stage. All you have to do is dial the number that you currently see at the bottom of your screen. Have a good evening, and don't forget that only the truth matters. Bye.